Well, France 24's Luke Schrego is following that vote for us in Yerevan. Luke, uh, what was turnout like today? Well, uh, as you know, polling ended at 8 p.m. local time with a turnout of 49.4 percent, somewhat higher than a lot of people were expecting given uh, these reports of voter apathy. Uh, the numbers actually given those reports possibly seem a little high, but uh, it seems reasonable to assume that uh, it might actually be the case that people have got the message as to just how important this vote is and actually came out in certain numbers to vote. Now, we've seen uh, reports particularly on social media of uh, irregularities going on. However, we uh, spoke to a lot of the observers who have been here. There are around about 500 from uh, international institutions, international observers, and about 8,000 local observers uh, the, who, who did say that things had been unfolding particularly well. Uh, and our analysts also indicated that uh, those uh, irregularities uh, should not, in fact, affect the final, uh, the final tally and the final result. Uh, we visited uh, various... Um, various uh, uh, po polling stations around the city and uh, everything seemed to be uh, to be unfolding well we spoke to a lot of different uh, observers again who uh, at each uh, area we spoke to said that the the vote was unfolding in a remarkably calm and peaceful manner now as the vote uh, the vote count continues the question really is which way armenia is going to jump well, uh, Luke, um, we did get, just get some breaking news in earlier from uh, the Electoral uh, Commission, which has been cited as saying Armenia's acting prime minister, uh, Nicole Pashinyan's party, is leading you know, these parliamentary elections. Give us a bit more about the broader context of this vote. Well, you have to look at the last eight months of what's been going on ever since uh, Armenia catastrophically lost that war against Azerbaijan in and around Nagorno-Karabakh. Now, um, it's, uh, the country has been doing a great deal of introspection over those last few months. It's led to quite the political crisis with uh, opposition mounting against Nikol Pashinyan. But um, it's, and, and it's led to security, uh, particularly in terms of the, the border, in, uh, in terms of where the Azerbaijani troops have now moved back up to. Uh, they're back on the old Soviet-era uh, border now with uh, demarcation issues going on. Uh, with Robert uh, Kocharian positioning himself as the candidate of security, now over the border in Azerbaijan, Baku knows that its old enemy is particularly weakened at this point. Uh, the, the, the balance of power has completely and utterly reversed itself from where things stood three decades ago when Armenia first took those territories, the, the contested province of Nagorno-Karabakh and the seven regions around uh, Karabakh that were meant to be used as a buffer zone. Now, of course, Baku is seeking to push its advantage uh, in recent weeks with incursions over the border into sovereign Armenian territory as this border demarcation continues. We've seen uh, villages cut in half. We've seen uh, the locals who live in the border regions uh, very badly affected by this. Now, Armenia may once have been able to negotiate those seven regions that I mentioned. They were ultimately meant to be used as bargaining chips in a, in a way to assure uh, some sort of political status for Karabakh. But that is decidedly no longer on the table. Armenia uh, didn't negotiate at the time and it lost everything it's, uh, everything it had. It's now very much on the back foot with little to trade and Baku knows this. Now, against that background, uh, with uh, Kocharian um, positioning himself as the, uh, the security candidate, um, Azerbaijan is, um, is watching very keenly to see which way things are going to go. Uh, Kocharian, of course, we know, is uh, a Karabakh native. He, uh, he's burnishing his credentials by trying to position himself as strong against Azerbaijan, that he won't lie down. Uh, we've seen chants in the streets of uh, no more leaders on their knees, for example. But uh, again, the question really has to be exactly which way uh, um, Armenia is going to jump, certainly in terms of exit polls. There has been nothing majorly official at this point. It is very, very early. We may be getting uh, results at around about, uh, very early preliminary results around about midnight. But uh, with, uh, we, we do expect that the counting will be going uh, long into the small hours and possibly into the morning itself. Okay, Luke Shrego, thank you very much for that. Luke Shrego, they're reporting for us from Yerevan.